and welcome back to another Transformation Tuesdays video. Today on Transformation Tuesdays, we are following the thing that I have been doing for the last couple of videos where I am kind of veering away from Pastor Michael Todd's sermons and specifically talking about what's been going on in my life recently and what God has been asking me to talk about. And this is not because um, I'm not interested in Pastor Michael Todd anymore. He's one of my favorite pastors. It's just that if you remember um, some videos back, I did mention that eventually I want to begin talking about the things that God directly leads me to talk about and not depending on somebody else's sermons. Um, and so God has been giving me the, the ability and the creativity to do that lately. And so I'm just following this thing for now. The next video might be another video with Pastor Michael Todd. Who knows? But for right now, we're going to follow that theme. So I hope you guys have been enjoying that and let that just set the tone for today's video. So if you saw the title of this video, it is called My David Story. So I have to give you a little background context about what's been going on with me lately. Um, and I'm going to sugarcoat a lot of things because I um, really recognize with social media and especially being on YouTube that there are some sacred things that you just don't put out. Um, and so because some of these things are very personal to me, they involve other people that are near and dear to my heart. Um, I don't want to get too overly in detail about what exactly has been going on, but I'll try to give you kind of like a pretext of why it's relative to what I'm talking about. So every morning when I'm getting ready for work and on the weekends, I listen to different sermons. So I listen to sermons from Pastor Michael Todd, from Dr. Darius Daniels, from um, Sarah Jakes Roberts and her husband Torre, from Pastor Steve Furick, Future. Y'all know him in Charlotte Elevation Church. Um, so I listen to a lot of different pastors. And you would think with all of those different pastors, I get a lot of sermons that are sometimes really related and sometimes they're not related at all. But lately for the past three weeks, I've noticed that the sermons that I've been watching in the morning have all referenced David in a different season of his life. So David, if you're familiar with the Bible, David is the guy who killed the giant. So David and Goliath up against, you know, him up against the giant. He killed him with the, um, what's the thing called? The little rock shooter thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Read your Bible. Okay. Um, so, but a lot of the sermons have been talking about David. Eventually David became a king. And so it just goes through different seasons of David's life. And it took me about two to three weeks to actually realize that God was using the story of David to answer some of the questions that I have been having for, um, for him a lot recently. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of go through, um, every situation that I've been dealing with in the past couple of weeks and explain to you why David's story relates to my story. So recently I've been dealing with something that I'm going to keep private off the camera. <laughs> Um, but I've been dealing with something that had me question why God anointed me out of all of my other siblings to do something that he's asked me to do. Now, if any of my siblings are watching this, this is not <laughs> to say that you are not anointed. God has called us all to do something. He's called us all to do something in different ways. And I don't know what he's called all y'all to do, but he specifically asked me to do something that I don't necessarily think that he's asked any of my other siblings, at least not in this way. Um, and, you know, when you're thinking back about your childhood and how you grew up, when certain things happen in your life, it's easy to play the victim. It's easy to have an excuse of why you don't want to be the bigger person or why you feel like you're old, you know, some type of, I don't know. You know how it can be, however you might have grown up, whatever deficiency that you might have had or neglect that you might have had, why you make the excuse of how you can't move forward from whatever situation that is. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> and there's just certain things that God has asked me to do that my flesh just did not want to do. That I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to take on the responsibility of doing it. I couldn't, I couldn't really accept that he was calling me to do it. You know, it was easier for me to pout about it instead of just 
really digging deep into myself and asking myself, why, you know, has he called me or why do I really not want to do something? So with that situation and some recent work situations, I've kind of been having this battle with myself of just being tired of being the bigger person, being tired of being the most compassionate person in the room, the most um, fair, um, the most respectful, you know, always having to set myself above the bar. It just kind of gets emotionally draining when a lot of times you're one of the few who handle situations a certain way and you don't get that same thing reciprocated back. Like I try to give people in my personal life and in my um, work life as much respect as I can. Am I perfect? No. Do I make mistakes? Definitely. I'm still learning. Um, but it does get stressful when you're having to be the one who people come to with uh, situations where you have to problem solve and, um, you know, do conflict resolution t with things that seem simple to you, but aren't so simple to other people. <laughs> um, and so I've just been kind of feeling lately that I was just kind of, my flesh was getting in the way of my spirit man and just feeling like, you know, I'm just tired of being the bigger person and having to listen and not being able to express the way that my flesh wants to express. Cause it's hard to hold your tongue when you standing in front of family members and or colleagues. It's hard to not respond in the way that your flesh wants to respond in certain situations. And um, that's just kind of the emotions that I've been dealing with. And as you know, my last video, I talked about just watching my mouth, making sure that I'm more aware of what I'm saying, but also what I'm thinking. And so I just kind of had, you know, a lot of questions for God lately. Just like, God, Lord, like what? <laughs> why? You know, I know you anointed me and I'm thankful for it, but why? I mean, there's other people that can do this. I'm just kind of tired right now, you know? Um, But through David's story, God began to reveal different situations to me that pretty much answered my question. I did all that rambling just to say that now I'm going to go through different seasons in David's life or different examples in David's life where they relate to mine and how God provided an answer for David, which also became answers for me as well. So in 1 Samuel 16, this is where I think I was first introduced to David's story um, in the Bible. And it talks about how um, there was a king who God was getting ready to dethrone. And so he sent Solomon out to um, find this man named Jesse who had eight sons. David was one included. And between those sons, God let Solomon know that there was a son there who he had anointed as king. And he wants Solomon, who was a prophet, to go find that son. And so Solomon gets to they, um, Jesse's land and he's like bring out all your sons line them up I'm trying to see who is the one that got anointed to be king but Jesse who neglected David left him out of the lineup so he only presented to Solomon seven sons um, and so going through the process Solomon ended up realizing that none of these seven sons were the was the one that got anointed and so he asked him if y'all have read the story, you know, David eventually gets brought to the forefront. So David is like the underdog. He gets brought to the forefront and the oil starts flowing and it just represents the fact that David is indeed the anointed one. I did this this story in a summary, but I would advise you to go read it again. That's 1 Samuel 16 where you get introduced to David's story. That I was listening to a sermon one morning. I was getting ready for work. And like I said, I have been hearing this David story over and over again. And at this point, I kind of knew the, the basics of his story enough to kind of not have to pay attention so much to when they're reading the scripture because you know what they're going to say. And I just so happened to hear Dr. Daniel say out of all the seven sons, David was the one that got anointed for this particular task. And when that was said, it's like snapped to me. And I just felt like God was like, finally, I had caught on to what God was trying to tell me. Like, 
I know you have five other siblings, but I called you for this particular task. <laughs> I want you to do this particular thing. If I wanted want somebody else to do it, I would have chose somebody else, but I chose you. It doesn't matter how many other people could do it. I'm ask, I'm telling you that you won't do it. I said what I said. It's pretty much what he was telling me. And so that instance prompt me, prompted me to go back and really look at David's story because I said, wow, this story is really significant to my life. And I'm sure it's significant to a lot of other people's lives as well. So it prompted me to go back and look for examples, other examples of David's life that really are significant to mine. And so that first example just told me that, you know, God prompted, God anointed me to be a leader. He wants me to be a leader, leader of certain things in my family and a leader um, at the workplace. And you guys know that I already talked about breaking those generational curses in my family. That's not to say that any of my other siblings aren't anointed to do that either. Um, but he has anointed me to do it in this particular way that he's asking me to do so. So it just rings to me that even though I might not always like the assignment, I have to remember that God's burden is light. He would never give us anything more than we can bear. Him and I are equally yoked and I learn from God. And so if I exude the obedience in the task, he's going to give me the proper tools and the help that I need to be successful. And that's pretty much what he's been doing in, in me dealing with um, things in my personal life and things in the work. So the um, story of David having seven brothers that got called before him to be considered king rang significant to me as well because there's a lot of people who make it to a destination that you would like to see yourself at before you. And a lot of times in life, we have to watch other people be successful in the areas that we want to be in, but we haven't quite made it there yet. And that just reminds me that even though he had seven brothers who were called before him, they were stronger than him. They um, were war, you know, they were used to being in war and they probably looked more like kings. You have to remember that God looks at the heart and man looks at the outward appearance. So even though you might have people, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about siblings, even though you might have people in your life who might reach a goal before you, always remember that if God has anointed you to be at a certain place, it will always be for you. No matter how long it takes you to get there, if God has started a good work in you, he's going to finish it and he's going to provide you with the tools and the assistance that you need to get there. So don't let seeing other people get to a certain place before you make you feel weary or doubt your ability to do so. Because if God has anointed you for something and he's promised you for something, it's going to be yours. Okay, so the next story, which is in 1 Samuel um, chapter 18, verses 10 through 11. So David eventually starts to play music for King Saul because Saul was being tormented with evil spirits and David was playing music for him to ease him and so that he may rest and go to sleep. And as you know, David got an opportunity to defeat Goliath the giant and Saul became jealous of that. So David dealt with abuse and mistreatment from Saul because after he defeated the giant, Saul started throwing spears at David. If you read the scripture, you'll see that Saul <laughs> threw spears at David twice and David dodged them both times. Now, you would think that that would be grounds for you to find a new job. Okay, if you start throwing something at me at the workplace, sweetie, I, I can't make no promises. Okay, um, but... David stayed there and a lot of people speculated that David stayed um, working for Saul because he was neglected by his father, Jesse. So even though Saul wasn't a perfect king, he was receiving the attention that he didn't get from home. And this rang relevant to me because it made me think about how many verbally and emotionally abusive relationships, intimate relationships that I've stayed in because I've had neglect from somewhere else. So because this relationship wasn't as bad as the last one, I've stayed longer even though I wasn't happy, even though I was settling and I was complacent, just because it looked better or I got something um, out of this one that I didn't get out of the last one, if that makes sense. And I feel like we can relate to all of that. It's like, how many times have we settled for something because it's not as bad as it was before? Or, you know, just telling us it could be worse. 
or because we've been neglected in a certain area where we don't know any better or don't know, don't even know to achieve better than that and a lot of times we don't even know what better than that looks like when you don't really have a good outlook on what proper love and care looks like it's hard to compare what better is and so you stick to things that are comfortable because you don't know anything else um and so i think we can all definitely relate to david when it comes to that point of view the next season in david's life that I want to talk about is in Psalms. And if you've read Psalms, um, you know that David wrote a, a big portion of songs. It's a lot of prayers in Psalms. A lot of people make gospel songs out of what has been written in Psalms. But there are a couple chapters in that book where David talks about him wrestling with something, where David was being tormented. Um, he wasn't at peace. And so Psalms 14, he talks about how God has left him, how he doesn't feel the presence of the Lord with him. And then also in Psalms 39, um, David talks about how he fell to some type of illness. So he was sick and he felt like these situations were acts of tough love from God. Like he was getting um, his consequences from some of the actions that he had done. And... That definitely rings relevant to me because I've talked about countless times on here about dealing with fear and not feeling the Holy Spirit with me. So sometimes I feel like I don't, I can't just grasp the Holy Spirit. I don't have that, that, um, like power in me to overcome certain things. But just in general, I'm 29 years old and I've wrestled with plenty in my life. Um, and I feel like lately, God has been showing me a lot of tough love. He's let me know that I'm in a season of preparedness. And when you're pre prepping for things, when you're practicing, when you're um, perfecting a craft, when you're growing, it's uncomfortable. There's times where God will just give you tough love. Like he will not always answer my questions right away. He will keep certain things from me because I'm not ready for those answers. Um, and I feel like in this season that God is forcing me to deal with the behaviors of my flesh. He's forcing me to have tough conversations with people and be the bigger person to, to set that example. Um, and he's really been asking me to hold myself accountable and be honest with him about my thoughts about this whole process. And a lot of times when I'm having conversations with God now, I'm just really honest about my thoughts. Like, you know, I can tell God, like, that was tough, God. Or I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Like, I don't I don't see the point of me doing that right now. Um, or, you know, and after I get through it and he really shows me how that's relevant to where he wants me to go in the future, I understand. And so now I just feel like I'm in prep season for my future. He's really molding me and transforming me into the person that I need to be so that he can release me into my blessing and let's not forget that this is still the year of release we're in march and we're still pushing forward um so my three words so far this year have been release have been persevere and now it's preparation oh gosh what is that okay y'all i had a bug look okay remind me to never ever live in another house apartment with a real fireplace in it because nobody told me how many bugs come through the fireplace like it is just ridiculous i'm over it okay so like i was saying <laughs> We're, we're going to persevere through this year. Um, and so I definitely can relate to David with him still having struggles and battles that he dealt with because those things just remind us that no matter how much we grow, we still need God to get us through. We still have to depend on God. Um, if you are familiar with David's story, then you would know that he goes on to be king and, you know, he has this wonderful life of being a leader of people, but he still dealt with a lot of stress. And I just remember um, 
to who more is given more is required and that's so true like you when you start to become who god wants you to be and you start to accelerate and you start to see these increases that he blesses you with in your life it's a lot that comes with that it's a lot emotionally it's a lot physically um and so you still have to very much so depend on god and not our own understanding and our own ability to bring us peace to those situations guidance in those situations and get us through because there's a lot of things that happens that you just ain't gonna understand <laughs> you're just not gonna know what i mean there's sometimes i'm just like well i don't even know what's going on i don't know what's going on in my head i don't know what's going on with these people over here it's just a lot and i just have to come home and get on my knees and pray and i'm like god help me make help me make it make sense <laughs> like show it to me plain lord god because you're pulling a lot out of me. But as I've said before in my video, growth is uncomfortable. It requires you to do a lot of things you don't want to do. Like admit that you're wrong. Like apologize. Like hold your tongue. Not cuss nobody out. Not get in a fight. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> it takes a lot. Okay. So the next uh, scripture that I want to talk about is 2 Samuel 13. And this one is one that's very, um, it's a touching topic. It's a pivotal time in David's life. It's probably the, one of the most hurtful times that David probably has ever had. Um, it tells a story about David's daughter who was raped by her half-brother. So David had a daughter named Tamar and she was raped by her half-brother, which was David's son. But of course they had different mothers. Um, and eventually David loses control and the relationship with his kids by not handling that situation properly. Um, some might say that he was passive aggressive. Um, eventually Tamar went to go live with her older brother, but David allowed the half brother who raped her to still be in the kingdom. And um, I think that David just expressed poor conflict resolution and problem solving skills poor parenting skills in that moment with such a sensitive yet um pivotal situation and so david's oldest son ends up killing the half brother and goes on this rampage trying to kill david his dad because of what happens to his sister and eventually both of david's sons end up being killed the son that killed the half brother and, and wanted to go after David ends up dying in battle. And so this was not a win-win situation for anybody. David loses two sons, but he also loses the relationship with his daughter and his daughter loses her older brother. Um, she still has to deal with the trauma of being raped by her half brother. And then now she doesn't have a solid relationship with her dad. And I can't relate to that exact story, but one thing that God, the biggest thing that God has shown me out of that situation is no matter how spiritual you are in life, no matter how good of a relationship that you have with God, because you know, David was supposed to be one of his best. Um, you still need those important life skills to deal with life's circumstances in a proper healthy way you still need conflict resolution skills problem solving skills healthy communication skills the your ability to be vulnerable your ability to um you know deal with situations that you face i mean it's you can be spiritual all day long and still not know how to communicate with someone still not know how to talk properly to someone more importantly, still not know how to parent in a very detrimental situation. Um, and so I think the biggest thing that God has been showing me is we always need to have that what would Jesus do mentality. And I know that's cliche, but you do because you can know how to pray for people. You can know how to give somebody a good word. You can know how to refer them to a scripture, but... When it comes to you handling your mess, when it comes to your interpersonal skills, where are you at with that? Because all that spiritual stuff is great, but we still have to leave church and live our everyday life 
You know, we still have to get up off of our knees when we when we're done praying and interact with people who might not be as godly as you or who might love God but just have a bad attitude. You know, you still got to, you still have to deal with everyday people. And so God has just been showing me that through my personal situations and situations at work that he is um, strengthening my skills and being well-rounded in those same things that I talked about. Conflict resolution, problem solving, facilitation, mediation. Um, he has me in prep season and he's strengthening my skills in those areas using my life experiences. And I think that's just really important um, just to remember that once you leave church, once you close your Bible, you still have to deal with life. You still have to deal with people. And God looks at how you handle tough situations too. The biggest commandment, the greatest commandment is love God with all your heart, mind, and soul and love others like you love yourself. Um, and so I think it's just really important to understand that he wants you to be spiritual. He wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to know your word. He wants you to be able to come to him, but then also he wants you to be able to go out and love others the way that you love yourself. Um, and so, you know, if you don't love yourself, that's a whole nother Transformation Tuesday that we're going to have to talk about. But I'm just giving you the basics. Um, and so I just wrote a note to myself that said, you must be able to deal with trials that come in the natural and spiritual realm. You got to be well-rounded, girl. You got to be. And then to sum up this video, the last thing that God um, revealed to me when, especially this past week when I was going through um, some work conflict resolution stuff, um, is Isaiah 55, verse 3 through 5. So God talks about blessing David to be a leader to those who didn't know him. And those people who didn't know him will follow him because of his anointing. And so this past week, as I was getting a little um, tired, <laughs> emotionally drained with doing some conflict resolution, God showed me this scripture and he pretty much comforted me with it, saying that he's going to be with me as I have to work through conflict. As he is in this scripture, he's going to give me the same love and anointing that he gave David to work through being a leader, work through um, handling situations with compassion and respect and professionalism, work through when I'm wrong and when I make wrong decisions, when I make mistakes as a leader, um, work through having to be the bigger person most of the time, work through having to be the only person most of the time who can be self-aware in a certain situation. It confirms to me again that he has called me to lead people and those people will follow me because of my anointing. And that gives me peace because it just, if I'm looking at David's story, it just reminds me that no matter how big the giant, again, the same love that God showed David to defeat the giant and go through his life and be king is the same love that he's going to show me knowing that I will succeed. And I think that, you know, once you accept the anointing on your life and understand that God is never going to leave you alone to deal with that anointing, it gives you peace. It doesn't make everything easier, <laughs> but it gives you peace in that situation because you know, based off of experience from what's in the Bible, God has always come through. He's always pulled through. And so I would suggest that if any of you watching my video are in leadership positions and you've kind of been feeling some similar things that I've been feeling as far as just struggling to lead people as a Christian, struggling to uh, quiet your flesh when you're in the middle of dealing with situations and having to be fair and having to deal with people who are not always compassionate to you, having to be compassionate to them and just you know, exuding that God-like characteristic, definitely check out Isaiah 55, uh, verse three through five, because it just, it brings me comfort to know, like, yes, I put you in this leadership position, but I didn't just throw you out here to the wolves. You're not alone. And my love will comfort you and will walk you through these situations. So yes, you guys, 
I hope you enjoyed this Transformation Tuesdays video. Feel free to let me know in the comment section down below if you can relate to any of David's stories. If you haven't checked out David's stories, please make sure that you do so because he lived a very interesting life. Um, and it's a lot of it is relative to me, so I'm sure it can be relative to you. But if you also have other examples in the Bible where someone's story was relevant to yours, leave it down in the comment section because I would love to read up on that as well. If you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Hit that subscribe button. If you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram page is always in the description box below. Make sure you thumbs up this video and you guys, I would love to interact with you. So please leave me some comments just telling me if you like the video or answering any of the questions that I just said before. And with that being said, I will see you next Tuesday in our next Transformation Tuesdays video. All right. Bye-bye.